Hello Year 11 and welcome to this week's virtual assembly. So as ever with an assembly we start with a thought of the week and this week the thought is the only thing constant is change and that's a quote from the Buddha. Now for you in Year 11 this is something to really think about that actually you're about to go through a significant educational change, your biggest for five years, you're about to move on to lots of different places, you're about to uh, change your friendship groups potentially, change the people you spend your day days with. So change and being prepared for change is a really important part of, of life. Given that obviously you're about to um, go through that significant change, what we would say, and I know this was um, said in last week's assembly, is that you really now need to start thinking about yourself. What goals do you want to set yourself to make sure that you're prepared for this change, to make sure that you make the most of that time left with us and you come out really successful, but that actually you're really thinking now about your next steps. What do you want to do with, with your life? What do you want to do with, with those next steps? What do you want to do accomplish over the next six months to a year? Those are really important questions that you now as young adults need to really start thinking about. Now, what we do know about that change is that you do have some control over that change in terms of your levels of preparation. The more you prepare for something, the more likely it is that you are ready for that change in your life. So one of the biggest uh, things or piece of advice we could give you is is try and make sure that you're prepared for those changes. Ask people, talk to people about those changes, talk to people about college, talk to your uh, siblings, to uh, older friends, talk to, to your parents, talk to people about how to adapt to that change because the better prepared we are, quite often the better that change is. And the second thing I want to talk to you about today is is freedom of speech. So one of your fundamental British rights is this idea of freedom of speech. And it's something that I'm sure you've debated lots in different uh, subjects across your time here at Harroway. But just to kind of reiterate some of the key messages around freedom of speech. You are about to obviously go out as, as young people in the world and kind of hopefully change the world. And the idea and notion of freedom of speech is going to be a really important part of that. So freedom of speech is one of our fundamental human rights. But what does freedom of speech actually mean? I think sometimes people say, well, I've got free speech and, and use it as a kind of uh, carte blanche for saying whatever they like. And that's that's really not how free speech works in our laws or the laws of lots of other liberal democracies around the world. So one of the key questions we always need to ask ourselves is, do we have the right to say exactly what we want? The very simple answer to that is no, we don't. don't we're not going to overcomplicate it. No, we absolutely don't have the right to say whatever we want. What we do have it, under British law and lots of other, like I said, uh, liberal democracies have exactly the same law. So this is not necessarily unique to Britain. But what we have is freer speech. We don't live on an island on your, our own. Nobody lives on an island on their own. And therefore we live in a community, we live in a society and that has to have and does have an impact on, on how we talk and what we can verbalise. So if you lived on an island on your own, then of course you can say whatever you like at whatever time you like, because it's going to impact nobody other than yourself. However, for the vast majority of your time in, in life, you are in what we call the public sphere. Unless you're locked away on your own, in, in your own room, you're in the public sphere. As soon as you put on your phone and you go onto the, any form of social media or WhatsApp or, or text messages, that you're suddenly now in the public domain. And because you're in the public domain, there are limits on what you can say because you are interacting with other people. Again, if you're on an island on your own, say we like, but we don't live on an island on your own. So therefore there are rightly by our government limits on what we can can say and those limits really depend on of obviously other people we have very very clear laws around discrimination around what we can say to other people because if we say something let's say that is uh discriminating against somebody because of their race or their religion then we're taking away one of their fundamental rights so you can't do that because you're taking away somebody else's right so 
Yes, we have freedom of speech or we have freer speech, but there are absolutely and rightly limits on that. And it tends to be things like hate speech. So we cannot uh, tolerate hate speech. We don't endorse hate speech. And therefore, if somebody is saying something that we deemed as hate speech, then obviously that is not acceptable and there will be consequences and that is punishable by British law. A fundamental British value is the idea of mutual respect, the idea that obviously we are going to respect each other in our society. And that's why what we have done over time is we've tried to educate people because obviously the more education people have, the more uh, respect they tend to show each other. That's why we give free education up to the 18, because actually the more educated people are, the more likely it is that they're going to be able to understand people and be in less intolerant of other, other people. Um, and it's also why obviously over the centuries, we've uh, defined limits on, on freedom of speech, because actually we know that somebody who let's say again i'll keep coming back to the example who is being racist is not showing mutual respect and and obviously has got a level of intolerance or a lack of education and therefore we do have to have a limit on on trying to think about how we get on best with people and what we can say to each other however that doesn't mean that we aren't going to disagree about things and that's a, again another fundamental of our society that you are allowed to hold different viewpoints and that's absolutely fundamentally fine in British society that you can hold fundamental viewpoints and that as long as you're not impinging on somebody else's rights obviously then we're allowed to debate those things we discuss those things um, people are going to have different viewpoints of them of things as long as it's done in a, a respectful way where people are thinking about their arguments there are lots of debates I know in year nine we've been doing about capital punishment at the moment and there's the two different arguments for, for both sides so there's, there's lots of things that we are going to disagree with and that's healthy in a society that you have things that you disagree with we have lots of different political parties some people think the conservative party is great some people think the labor party is great some people think the liberal party is great some people think we should tax people more some people think we should tax people less these are all debates that we're going to have and we're all going to have differing opinions around these things so this quote from Voltaire about I disagree with what you say but I'll defend to the death your right to say it is really important that we have good levels of freedom of speech and we do have good levels of freedom of speech we can criticize the government if if we choose to we can defend the government if we choose to all of these things are as are really important as well and as you are now becoming young adults you're finding your voice and you will have opinions about things and as long as they're done in a respectful way that's really important what we want to try and avoid is obviously sometimes there's a person who claims they're a really good arguer but what they actually mean is they're just really good at kind of shouting people down and that's that's actually not a particularly good arguer so what we should hopefully be trying to do when we're thinking about freedom of speech is we should always really be thinking before we speak i know that's something that obviously we're told since we're we're younger but actually trying to really come up with good reasons for why you think something and quite often that's be based on facts and actually really delving into something and understanding something before we generate a, a viewpoint is a really important trait in somebody. It's a really valuable trait to somebody that they've gone away and actually researched it. And they're not just claiming something without actually having any real evidence for it, but they've actually gone away and really thought about it and got facts about that thing. And finally, just on last note, one of the other big things you need to be really careful of when we just talked about facts is that some people are likely in society and, and likely in uh, public life and all those things to try and twist facts. And you, one of the big things about when you leave school is you're going to have to think about whether the person presenting some, an argument to you or is actually talking with evidence or is just claiming something based on hatred. And that's a really important thing as well, that actually you coming up with your own mind and trying to really question individuals, particularly individuals in power, about whether they are actually telling you the truth or whether they are trying to actually manipulate you, whether they're doing it for their self-interest. 
those are really important skills that you need to develop as you get older because you're going to be presented with things and a, a whole load of things and it's going to be important that you decide what you consider to be the truth and hopefully that truth is based on good sound evidence.